Hi folks, welcome to my channel and today's Draw With Me video, where I'll be showing you step by step how I draw an older person's eye, including wrinkles, with pastel pencils. The pastel pencils I'm using today are the Faber-Castell Pit Pencils, and I've chosen to use these over soft pastel sticks, because unlike some brands of pastel pencils, they can easily be sharpened to a nice fine point, which I want for the smaller, more detailed drawing I'm working on today. The type of paper you can use for pastels varies quite a bit in size, texture and colour, but I'm using the pastel matte paper which I've done a first impressions video on and which I'll link in the card above. Pastel pencils can be a bit tricky to sharpen owing to their soft core, so I tend to use a small handheld sharpener, although the Faber-Castell pit pencils I'm using today can be sharpened without any problem in my crank handle Derwent Superpoint sharpener. You can also use a sandpaper block to regain a sharp point to your pencil, and I also use this to clean off my blending stumps or tortillons. And speaking of blending stumps, I like to use the paper blending stumps and tortillons, which you can buy fairly cheaply in a variety of sizes. You can also make use of things you might have lying around at home, such as makeup sponges, cotton wool or tissue, but bear in mind these may not be suitable if you're using more of a textured paper. Lastly, I like to use a kneaded eraser, which is great for lifting off pastel from your paper, should you need to make any corrections. So with all that said, let's jump in with step one, and this is to use your reference picture to pick out the colours you're going to use and swatch them out, ideally on the same paper you'll be drawing on. This is particularly important if you're working on coloured paper, as some colours may come up differently with a different colour underneath them. The reference picture I'm using today is one I found on Pixabay and I'll put details for that as well as all the art supplies I'm using today in the description box below if you want to go and check that out. But please don't feel you have to have all the same supplies as me. If you've only got pastels in sticks, I'll also be giving you a few tips on how you can use these for detailed areas later on in the video. So step two is to make or transfer an accurate sketch onto your paper with a pencil before adding any pastel. And step three is to start applying your first layer of pastel. I'm starting with the pupil and iris, but please remember this is just my way, not the only way or even the right way. So feel free to experiment and find the way that works best for you. Now over the last couple of weeks, we've done an eye study using just a black and white colored pencil to work on values and contrast. And for this, we worked from dark to light. Then we did a watercolor eye study and worked light to dark. But what about pastels? Well, the advantage of using pastels is that you can lay down light colours over dark ones. So with the pupil and iris of the eye, I can go in with the darkest areas first and not worry too much about leaving the highlight areas free of colour, as they can be easily applied over the top later on. The disadvantage of using pastels is that they can be messy and dusty, and that can put a lot of people off. But pastels are really versatile and when used in sticks, blocks or pans can cover large areas a lot quicker than, say, colour pencils. So to minimise smudging and mess, there are some practical tips that will help. Firstly, try pastel matte paper as this claims to minimise dust and I found it does make a difference. Secondly, start from the top of your page and work down so your hand isn't covering your work. Thirdly, place a protective piece of paper under your hand whilst you're drawing. And lastly, render the drawing as you go, so you're not continually going backwards and forwards over the same areas. That said, with this eye drawing, I started in the middle, but because this is quite a small study, there's less chance of me smudging the area with my hand. I also wanted to start on the pupil and iris, as I thought it would be a good starting point for all those wrinkles to radiate out from so my method can vary depending on the size of a piece and what it is I'm drawing. Now I'm going to kick this part of the drawing into a time lapse before we come back with step four, which is blending the pupil and iris. If you want though, you can change the speed of the video in your YouTube settings or pause the video if you're drawing along with me. So now we've laid down the main colours in the eye, it's time for step four, which is to blend and smooth out the area with our blending tools. 
I'm using a small paper stump for this which is good for detailed areas. The trick is not to go in too heavy handed as you don't want to lose the details you've put in. You also don't want to drag the dark pastel colours over the light ones, so if you're worried about doing this, blend out from the lightest areas to the darkest areas, using short strokes and remember you can remove any colour from your blending stump using a separate sheet of paper or a sandpaper block. Blending pastels out like this helps to fill in any grain of the paper that's still visible and it really helps make your drawing to look realistic. Often though, blending can dull your colour as some of the pastel is picked up on the blending stump. So to get back the contrast and vibrancy of your colours, you may need to go back over the area again or you may simply want to add in another layer to add a bit more detail. So step 5 is to adjust contrast and add final details. Step 4 and 5 can be repeated as many times as necessary until you're happy with the result. Now we're going to move on to the whites of the eyes and for this I'm going to use a light grey pencil as a base as the whites of the eyes aren't pure white but you can also use pale blue or even some pinky colours but study your reference picture if you're not sure. This is an older person's eye so there are also some blood vessels visible which are put in at the end. The steps I use are the same as for the pupil and iris, laying down a base colour, blending it out and adding further layers and details as needed. Remember though that the eyelid will cast a shadow over the top of the white area and that there will be shadow in the corners of the eye too. In an older person's eye there is often less distinction between the white of the eye and the iris, so I've added some blue and grey pencil here which I'll blend out later. For the next part of the eye, I'm going to use a pinky brown pastel pencil to outline the eye, being careful to leave a slight gap where the waterline is, as a reminder to add some highlight with a white pencil later on. This will help make the eye appear wet and glassy. I also use this same colour to begin to put in some detail at the tear duct and mark out the beginnings of some eyelashes. Next we're going to move on to the skin around the eye but not forgetting to first put in that little ledge area which is where we'll draw the lower eyelashes coming out from later. Now I'm going to pop in another time lapse here and I'll come back once we've put in some skin tones, marked out the position of the lower lashes and we're ready to start on those wrinkles. So it's finally time to tackle those wrinkles and to help us draw them realistically it's helpful to think about what wrinkles are. So a wrinkle is a fold, ridge or crease in the skin, so drawing them as a solid dark line isn't going to make them look natural. In order to achieve a more realistic effect we need to create the illusion of depth and this is done by clever shading and gradients of value. And don't forget not all wrinkles are equal, deeper wrinkles or skin folds have darker values towards their centre whilst lighter wrinkles or lines in the skin need lighter values. It's a good idea to go back to your reference picture again to look at those differences, but once you know what you're looking for, actually drawing them is pretty easy. So I usually start with a sharp dark brown pencil to begin with, and when using pastels at least, I can mark them in initially with a thin line. This is just to map out where the wrinkles are going before softening them out with my blending stump later on. Something else to look at when drawing wrinkles is that they are not always the same width or depth all the way along. Often they thin out at the ends and are deeper and darker in the middle, but each wrinkle will be slightly different so it's important not to draw them all exactly the same. This variation will help to make your portraits more natural and interesting, so check back with your reference picture and try and make a mental note of these differences so you can apply them to your drawing. 
The crease above the eye, for example, is thicker in the centre and tapers out at each end, so I thicken up my line with the same dark brown pencil. With this done, I now use the same pencil to map out some of the wrinkles and creases radiating out from the eye. For the finer lines, I just use a lighter brush on my pencil and don't make the lines as thick. I like to work a small area at a time, so with a few of the lines and creases mapped out, I then go back and add in some more colour to the top eyelid. This is a slightly lighter colour pastel because as we move away from the eyelid fold, the shadow cast won't be as dark and this gradation in value will help give us the depth we need to make our eyelid look natural. I try and leave a line of lighter value before the start of the more pink pastel tone as this helps give the eyelid form and shape. Then I use a lighter tone again to add in a few small curved lines to indicate smaller wrinkles here too and finish by adding contrast to the corner of the eye. So with our base colours down, the next step is, as before, to blend them using our pencil stump. Bear in mind, as we said earlier, blending helps to cover up the tooth of the paper, but can mean you lose some vibrancy and detail, which is why, with pastels, you can continue alternating between laying pencil down and blending and layering further colour and detail back on top until you're happy with an area and are ready to move on to the next bit. One thing to be aware of though is that some pastel papers hold up better than others insofar as how many layers of pastel they will take. With this pastel mat though it does hold up pretty well to multiple layers, in my limited experience anyway, and I've been really happy with it. However some people have said that they have had issues with certain hot spots on the pastel mat paper where the pastel doesn't stick, so I leave it up to you to decide if it's something you want to invest in. So now I'm going to show you my favourite and very easy trick for drawing realistic lines and wrinkles, as well as using gradients of value underneath one side of the fold as you saw with the eyelid, I also like to use my blending stump to soften the other side of the crease line too. I'm not adding any extra colour, just blending out the first line I laid down. I continue this technique for the lines underneath the eye too just smoothing over the whole line here so the lines look like real creases in the skin surface. So the method of applying a base layer of pastel followed by blending, followed by another layer of pastel and blending again and so on, is the same for the rest of the areas of this eye drawing. I find working with pastels very relaxing. They are so versatile and flexible and allow for you to mix them either on the paper or on a separate sheet of paper to be applied with a blending stump or tortillon. So, even if you haven't got all of the colours available to you that you think you'll need, there is the flexibility of mixing together colours that you do have. I mentioned earlier in the video that you can still draw in small details with a stick or chalk pastel, and that's how. Simply by rubbing the pastel onto a separate piece of paper and using a small blending stump to pick it up. It's rather like creating a paint palette and using your blending tool like a paintbrush. So the techniques I mentioned can be adapted to suit the pastels you do have in your art supplies, so give it a go. I also like that with pastels on the whole, if you make a mistake, change your mind or even smudge your work, you can pretty easily use a kneaded eraser to correct it. And if you don't have one of these, you can also use blue tack, which does work much the same. So now I'm going to go in and repeat my process by drawing in some more wrinkles around the eye, gradually moving outwards. I'm also adding a bit more value to some of the existing wrinkles, and at this stage the drawing does look 
pretty scary, but as we blend those areas out and add more skin tones in, it starts to slowly come together. As I mentioned in the last two Draw With Me videos, getting the right values in is really important if you want to create something realistic. This is easier to gauge in monochromatic studies, but a bit harder to judge when working with a range of different colours. Keep a reference photo close by and refer to it often to make sure that you're on the right track. If you're not sure that your contrast and values are right, you can also try taking a photo of your work and comparing that to your reference picture. It's sometimes easier to see areas that still need work. Now I'm using my blending stump to soften the lines I made for the wrinkles and creases under the eye. Whilst this blending does fade and blur the original line I drew, you can still see the darkest part in the centre, so it gives the illusion of depth. I then build up the skin tones around these lines with a lighter shade of pinky brown. Notice too how for some of the wrinkles I add more width to them to add variety and when drawing in smaller lines and creases I use a lighter pressure on my pencil. Notice as well how the wrinkles are all in different directions and cross over one another too, but they still generally follow the contours of the face. So at this stage I wanted to add more of a weathered grey brow tone to the face and the colour I wanted to use was in a stick form. So like I mentioned earlier, I rubbed the stick onto my test piece of paper and then used my blending stump to pick it up and apply it over my drawing. This is a very soft and creamy pastel by Snellier, so it has the benefit that it lays down quickly and easily. And as I'm applying this, I'm trying to leave a lighter area in between adjacent wrinkles and folds in an attempt to create a gradient effect and add form to the skin folds. Another thing I like to do is to use the colour I've picked up on the paper stamp to map out other areas around the eye, like where the eyebrow will be here. Eyebrows and eyelashes are quite different in old people compared to those we've drawn so far. The eyebrows of an old person, especially in men, tend to be fuller and less uniform. They can be more varied in colour and the direction the individual hairs face. Eyelashes, on the other hand, tend to be shorter, more sparse and lighter in colour. So these are things we'll bear in mind when we come to fill them in in a short while. Here I decided to add another darker layer of pastel to the inner corner of the eye, and this time applied it using a cheap eyeshadow applicator. 
Using this, I could just tap in more colour without removing or ruining the layers I'd already put in. This is far more the overall colour I was aiming for, but we'll have to add back in another layer to redefine some of those lines. So with the main colours and wrinkles down, it was time to go in with the white pencil and add some highlights to the eye. The main areas are the reflection in the pupil, the tear duct and that area along part of the waterline that I mentioned earlier on. This is also a good time to add detail to the lighter eyelashes and add some fine lines to the lower part of the top lid. From there I went in and lightly added some lighter values to the area between creases so they'd look a bit more 3D. And as much as I go on about constantly checking back at your reference photo, it doesn't mean you have to replicate each and every line or skin crease for your eye study to look realistic. Just use it as a guide for values and anatomy, otherwise you'll just get bogged down by it and tend to rush. I on the other hand could do with rushing just a little bit more. I had intended to do this as more of a real time video, but got lost track of time and this took longer than I realised which is why I've had to time lapse a lot more of it than I intended. I hope though that you've still picked up a useful tip or technique and that you might consider giving pastels a try as a result. But despite the length of time I spent on this eye study, I did enjoy doing it and with the addition of yet another layer and some more dark brown pencil to get the contrast back on those wrinkles, I was pretty happy with how it was turning out. In next Tuesday's video, I'm going to tackle a smaller pastel portrait using some of the techniques we've looked at today. But don't worry, that one won't be in real time. If you've tried pastels before, either as sticks or pencils, let me know in the comments box what you like or dislike about them and what types of things you draw with them. There are lots of things I like about pastels, but my main issue is whether or not to use fixative, as I've heard that most fixatives change the colour of your drawing, so let me know as well if there's one that you use or would recommend. So finally we are at the last stage of this drawing and all that's left to do is add in the eyebrows. All I used for this was a black and white pencil and for drawing realistic hair it's important that your pencils are nice and sharp. If you only have stick pastels and are struggling with this part you can always substitute coloured pencils here instead. So that's it for today folks, I hope you've enjoyed the video and found some part of it helpful. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel where I post videos twice a week on all things art related. Hit the bell icon too if you'd like to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. Thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you very soon. Bye!